Up close tonight, recently investment strategist, Wall Street CEO and radio host Peter Schiff went down to the park with a sign reading, I am the 1%, let's talk. He also had a camera crew. Watch. We're in the 1%, and we're in the 99%. What, wouldn't you like to get into the 1%? No, I, you know, you don't want more money? You don't want... Uh, if I offered to put you in the one percent right now, it's not a matter of whether. Down? And I would pay my share and get rid of Let's, the one okay, tax cuts immediately. What do you? Immediately. Okay, let me ask you a question. Hold on, hold on. Warren Buffett and his no. secretary. What? I would let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So that these folks hold could on. pay their student loans, could get off of food stamps, could be successful, just like you. Wait, what are you hold driving? On. Hold on. They don't have a car. What do you think my fair is? Share is? What percent of my income do you think get would be fair? Get rid of the Bush tax. No, no, no. Don't just give me a percentage. No. Percent. What percent? Marginal. So you think it? Hold on. Even what, CPA what do you ask think? the tax guy. What do you guy? think would be ask fair? Ask the tax guy. What's fair rate for rate his rate. clients? Like what do you zero. think is fair? Rate. National average runs close to 17 percent. A whole bunch of people, about 50% okay, don't pay any taxes. But how much do you think I should pay? What would be fair for me? I, I don't know what your sure, income is. I sir. can't tell you that. Well, what do you, I believe in a progressive income tax. That is fair. I pay? Okay, well, the, I love, all right, I'm paying all, all right, I, well, that would be a huge tax cut for me. I pay much more than 35% of my total income in tax. I am giving the government half of what I earn. You think they should take more? I think we should get rid of the Bush tax cuts. But that means I would be paying more than half of what but I earned the government. There's no way you could cut all the expenses you want without and meanwhile, increasing revenue. There's no way to fix and this problem. If you raise there's my no taxes, way. maybe I'll just decide to sell my business and fire 150 people. Well, Peter Schiff joins us now. He's the author of How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes. Also with us, Princeton University Professor Cornell West, author of more books than we've got time to mention, and co-host of the Smiley and West radio program uh, who's also been uh, part of these uh, protests quite often in, uh, in recent months. Uh, both. Thank you guys for being with us. Peter, one, one thing we haven't seen a lot at Occupy Wall Street protests is Wall Street businessmen like yourself going down there. What, what are you trying to accomplish in doing that? Well, you know, I sympathize with the situation that they have, but I'm trying to help encourage them uh, to direct their anger towards Washington. You know, it's big government that has wrecked the U.S. economy, not capitalism. They need to understand that. And if they really want a bright future to this, for this country, it's capitalism that's going to provide it, not government. Cornell West, what do you think of, of, of what Mr. Schiff is saying here? Well, one, I just think it's a beautiful thing that Brother Peter goes down for dialogue. Democracy is all about public discussion. I think it's very clear that the Occupy movement is very much not about hating any individuals, but rather we hate injustice, that we hate obscene inequality. And I think Peter would agree that there are human values that are not reducible to market price. There's precious human life that's not reducible to market calculation. And the real question is, how do we deal with social justice and market price? There's always a tension there, and that's where the tire hits the road. Peter, Peter Schiff, you think these protesters should be angry at Washington, not Wall Street, but Washington didn't force financial institutions to invest in credit default swaps or offshore U.S. Oh, yeah. jobs oh. or give themselves million-dollar bonuses. Do you think that any no. of the anger at banks and corporations is justified? No. None. Washington did create that environment. It was the Federal Reserve that kept interest rates down at 1%. If we didn't have a central bank keeping rates so low, we never would have had all the speculation. We never would have had the, the mortgage bubble. And in fact, it was Freddie and Fannie, government-created entities, that were insuring all the mortgages. That was responsible for the bad behavior. You know, the people down there... Wait, aren't Occupy people Street, responsible they seem for their think... own bad behavior? Aren't, aren't companies and individuals well, supposed to be responsible yeah. rather than just blaming yeah. government for bad behavior? Well, as I, look, Look, if the government no, no, liquors no, no, you up and no. now you're drunk and you do stupid things, I mean, you got to understand why Wall Street made all these mistakes. Remember, I was there for no. years warning about these problems. I saw this crisis coming from a mile away because I saw how government was distorting the market. Professor West? No, 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 Peter. But, Peter, it was Wall Street that put the pressure on government to undercut Glass-Steagall so that investment banks and commercial banks could merge so they could trade rather than lend, I, speculate rather than provide resources. That well, was I, I don't doubt from that. Wall Street. Let's point. Let's finish his point. No, but, but no, but no, but no, but from Wall point. Street with, politici with politicians who are themselves either shaped, influenced by big money, or sometimes just involved in legalized bribery. So I think you got the story wrong. It's really the influence from the outside. It was at 1%. It was the oligarchs putting their well, pressure on government.
The problem is that Washington shouldn't have that influence to give out. The problem is in Washington having the power that people are lobbying to benefit from. But remember, Glass-Steagall was yeah. put in place to counteract the damage of another government regulation, which was guaranteed bank accounts. The government has already poisoned the banking system by guaranteeing everybody's account. That's not capitalism. If the government wasn't guaranteeing bank accounts, banks would be a lot more responsible because the depositors would actually care what the banks did with their money. But the government has told but the depositors the not to care. It doesn't matter what the banks do because the government's going to bail you out. Professor? No, no, no. We, we need a governmental guarantee because the level of insecurity and, un, un, and uncertainty was so pervasive in the 1930s that you could not get a financial system off the ground. So that's you had to have true. some kind that's not of. That's true. You had to have some basis. No, that's just it, not the, true. The, the free marketeering that was going on in the 1920s didn't require some kind of government intervention to allow some stability. No, it was, Are you denying that? No, it was. Are you denying it, that? No, it was the Federal Reserve. Yeah, I am denying that. It was the Federal Reserve no, in the I, 1920s no, I think you're wrong that was that. too loose. That's why we had a stock market bubble in the 1920s. We had a depression because Roosevelt and Hoover didn't let the free market work. They tried to prop everything up artificially. They interfered with the free market. We didn't even get out of the depression until we ended the Second World War. That's how long uh, uh, yeah, the government no, delayed no. that correction. Yeah. No, no, go we need to have coffee. History. We need to have coffee and <laughs> cognac to wrestle through this. I think you're absolutely wrong on that, my brother. <laughs> this is going to require both coffee yeah, and so cognac? Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think we're going to need yeah. a little cognac yeah. to work this out, brother Pete. I think you're very... And yeah, we're not going to yeah, solve absolutely. the problems that you're talking about. We're not going to solve the problems that you're worried about by raising taxes on the people that produce the wealth, that create the jobs, that start the businesses, no, no, but, that produce but no, all Peter, the Peter, If we're going to lift the poor, take, it's free market capitalism that's going to do it, not government redistribution. No, if, if we had taxes on financial transactions of, of stocks and on derivatives, <laughs> why? Because it's unproductive <laughs> no. speculation that's been no. driving so much of this problem. I, I agree with you. That's being driven by the Federal Reserve, but I don't want to send more money to Washington. Not, that's, that's, that's not, not going to grow Reserve. the economy. That's, that's going to grow the, the government. Reserve. That's greed. That's corporate greed on Wall no. Street, unregulated by no. any ideals of justice tied no, to no, government. We, well, because the government, because the government is taking away all the market regulations and replacing it with less productive, less effective government regulations. Look, return the but sound money, let interest rates go up. We're not going to have all this speculation. We'll have real investment on Main Street, but we're not having that but, but, now because the Federal Reserve and the government are getting in the way. But, but there's a gap between small business and mega business. It's the mega business that is not subject to market discipline. Small business has been subject but, to market but discipline. Why is How do you deal with so mega business? You've got to decentralize it. The, if they're too big to fail, the reason too big that to gap is so big. The reason the gap is so big is because government policy, because of the Fed. If you go back to a real free market capitalistic system, that gap is going to close on its own. No, no, how could that be? I mean, how free is your capitalism? Yeah. We, we had child labor laws. We wouldn't even have the weekend. It no. wasn't for the labor movement. That was free, cap no, that was free market capitalism, no. too. Workers no, working it was for the seven free days market. a week. It no, it was the free market that ended child labor and working on the weekends by raising no, the productivity of No, it was of organized it people was from below course. like the Occupy No, it wasn't that labor. That, That's a bunch brother. of nonsense. It was organizing from that below. That is liberal propaganda. It was a mud raking of Upton no, no, Sinclair and others. Yeah. No, no, so it's right free market right capitalism that lifted the standard of living. That's what made workers more productive because we gave them tools. It was capitalism that created that from savings, from investment, and all that came because we had a free country. We had limited regulation, if limited it, government, limited taxation, and we blew we it. We had a huge trade. lead, and we blew it all because we embraced socialism. Cornel West, I got to give you the final. My brother, five. we didn't we didn't have free trade unions till the 1930s because of the power of the bosses and crushing the union. Yeah, L and then that the was unions not free destroyed market. the that businesses. That was not free market capitalism no. that created we gotta the have unions. We, the unions had to the do that The auto workers in Detroit made more money before the unions than they did after the unions. I'm gonna, I got to jump unions, in here, guys. They worked for thriving a, companies that didn't need bailouts. It's a, it's a fascinating discussion. We, we want to have you both. We have, but I wish we had more times. I want to debate my brother Peter <laughs> directly on uh, this. Here, here's the deal. We'll have both of you. We'd love to have both of you back on and with a lot longer time maybe next week. And I appreciate that. Yeah, it's a good dialogue and one that's important. Peter Schiff, thank you. Uh, Cornell Thanks, West, Anderson. Professor, thank you very much.